In recent years, telemedicine has emerged as a reliable, secure, and effective tool in enhancing overall health care communication. It's proven to be a cost-effective and time-saving solution for both doctors and their patients. Doctors Michael Humer and Bill Nellums are both well-respected thoracic surgeons located in Kelowna, British Columbia and work in conjunction with Interior Health Authority to provide services to patients throughout the BC Interior region. Both doctors are pioneers in telethoracic practice, utilizing telemedicine in treating many of their patients. Their colleagues, Andrew Luoma and Anad Jugnoff, have also successfully adopted the technology. Well, in the early days when we started off, our biggest challenge was how do we provide uh, specialty care to uh, distant rural communities? Uh, we run the only thoracic surgical specialty care unit in the interior of British Columbia. We're the only unit that serves the patients in the interior health and the northern health regions. And so our challenge was how do we deliver specialty care to a vast uh, area where many of our patients live in rural communities. That was the biggest challenge. So we embraced this technology in order to reach out to those patients. In fact, we've now seen over 8,000 patients using telemedicine during the last eight years. 30% of our total practice is now seen by this means. It's amazing, because as you sit there, the screen just disappears and you're in the room with the patient. And we've been able to do really tough things. We've been able to break news, bad news to patients like advising them that they've got inoperable cancer. And you know what? We're able to do that. And we've become comfortable with it. And our patients are comfortable with it. And with the nurse on the other end provides a lot of support for the patient. Both Dr. Nellums and Dr. Humer traveled to the town of Caslow, British Columbia to follow the story of one of their past patients, Mr. Winston Churchill Barclay. Michael Humer, my colleague and I, replicated the trip from here to Caslow, the same trip that Mr. Barclay would have done had he been asked to come and see us. So we got in our car, we drove on a wintry day to Caslow, and we experienced the trip that he would have had had he come to see us. You know, you mentioned 8,000 patients. You know, it's 8,241 patients over eight years. And each of those patients has a story. And each of those patients, hopefully, telemedicine has allowed us to access them closer to their community. So hopefully today we're going to tell not our story, we're really going to tell the story of the patients, and we're going to tell the stories of their communities and what support telemedicine has allowed their communities to provide and we're going to start in the community of Caslow and hopefully hopefully be able to tell that story. We've looked after a great number of patients using this telehealth program but Mr. Barclay in particular is an important person because he his care spanned that period of time before the onset of uh, telehealth and it spanned over into the period where he was able to get the benefit of the program as well. Mr. Barclay and his wife Maureen are residents of the small town of Caslow, BC. After being diagnosed with a serious health condition, Mr. Barclay was forced to seek treatment from the main surgical centers in both Kelowna and Vancouver. Unfortunately, Caslow was over six hours from Kelowna and over 11 hours from Vancouver. Mr. Barclay ended up making a total of seven trips to and from these centers, totaling over 4,000 kilometers. The estimated costs of his travels over one quarter of his yearly income. We are a mountain town with a windy road and particularly in winter time there's definitely an obstacle in terms of getting there and getting there safely. Caslow has very few resources. Anybody requiring any specialist has to travel out of the community and for them to even go to trail to have an initial visit is a two-hour trip one way and a lot of times their initial visit, the doctor's visit is five minutes which really is not good, especially winter roads that we have. It's not good for the environment and it's really costly because a lot of people have to end up staying overnight. That's just for trail. If they have to go to Kamloops or Kelowna, it's even further. As the fall and winter months approached, the Barclays were regrettably forced to postpone a November appointment with Winston's Vancouver specialist until May, as treacherous road conditions proved too dangerous. When I arrived there, and he got talking to me, he said, you know, if I'd been able to meet up with you a few months ago, he said, you'd been in here a lot earlier, and we would probably have done procedure a little bit differently. After meeting with doctors Humer and Nellums of the BC Thoracic Surgery Program in Kelowna, 
Winston began using telemedicine communication and was soon receiving quality health services and information without having to leave the comfort of his own community. We've got to make changes within the healthcare system. And not only make it more efficient, but it'd be certainly a lot more economical for, for everything. Through the use of telemedicine, Mr. Barkley had lessened the burden of exhaustive travel and expenses on his family, spending less than $10 and only five hours of his own time. The availability of video conferencing with different hospitals is an incredible thing if it's done in the right way because there are so many people who really can't either afford or can't manage the time but they got to do it. They got to go either to Kelowna or go out to Vancouver. We've served 43 different communities. We've been able to save six million patient kilometers of travel. We've decreased travel risk. It's an environmental bonanza. We maintain the hub and spoke functionality of the communities we serve. We serve our communities as well as our patients. So it's been quite a ride. Michael and I are very proud of what we've been able to accomplish. Very, very proud. <laughs>